What's up everybody, welcome to today's video. And today is a good one. I had the opportunity again to speak to the photo booth boss himself. Innocent, Innocent did a series on YouTube where he documented his journey to make zero dollars all the way up to $100,000 in his first year in the photo booth rental business. And uh, today's a good one, man. I mean, if you guys have a photo booth company or if you just started or if you plan on starting, this is a video for you. I wish something like this existed when I first started. You guys get some popcorn, get a pen and a pad, something to drink. It's a long video, but it is definitely worth it if you want some information. So let's get right into it. Hey, how's it going everybody? Uh, again, I am back with the photo booth boss, Innocent. Uh, thanks man, thanks for coming on. What's up everybody? Thanks Drew for having me again. Let's get right into it, man. The first question I have for you is, um, let's just say I'm someone just getting started in the business. I just bought my photo booth. What's the next step? What's the first thing I should do after that? Again, one of the reasons why I think I was so successful is I didn't wait till I got the photo booth. It was me um, watching videos, Josh's videos from Photo Booth International and really deep diving into how am I going to really be successful at this business? Because I think some people have the... Um, I guess the thought I would say that, oh, I just got my photo booth. The leads are just going to come in. I'm going to make a lot of money, right? That's kind of what they're thinking. And unfortunately, that's not the case. And they quickly find out like, oh, my God, I got this uh, $5,000, $10,000 investment basically as a house fixture uh, with their plants on it or it's in the garage and they're not making any money. They have to sell it and kind of they just go out of business before they even got into business. So the main thing is really um deep diving studying maybe even getting a mentor uh second thing would definitely be doing free events you know they don't even do their homework right they don't have a, a really an actual plan an example i'll give to you is um um let's see how i want to make this sound so it's politically correct my wife is african-american okay so one day she came up to me she goes hey she looked at my website and it has uh, a heterosexual black couple and then it had like a white couple and I have, I have a, a variety of people on there, right? And she goes, he goes, how come there's not a real black couple on there? That girl is mixed. And I'm like, oh shit, he can't win for losing. <laughs> so I, I like, I, so I'm like, babe, I said, do you know, I said, uh, how many black events did we do last year? We did almost 180 events. So she had to start thinking, well, you did so and such, such and such. I said, I think it was less than 10. So, you know, so I'm, I'm just thinking, so, so I'm actually catering towards Hispanics, Mexicans, whites, right? So the example I gave her was, if, if you're a hunter, like I love to hunt, I have, a, I have a ranch with my dad, we go fishing. And if you're fishing in a pond and the majority is bass, right? What are you going to fish for? <laughs> you know, think about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully that makes some sense, no, right? No, no. Bro, that makes sense. So, I get you. <laughs> so I started thinking outside the box. I said, okay, I'm going to reach out to some African-American leaders. And, you know, I looked on in the community and I found this gentleman on uh, one of the Facebook groups and I was like, hey, he has a magazine. So he's just starting out. It's a small publication. I, I posted it on, uh, on my Facebook page, which cost me money, right? It's out of my budget. So I, <laughs> that's another mistake. People don't actually have a budget for marketing. It's kind of, I'm going to just hand out my card. Handing out your card is one form of marketing, but it's really a small percentage on what you really need to be doing. Mm -hmm. And I'll share that here in a second. So I reach out to them. Obviously, I, I want to try to reach some African-Americans that, that, that fit my demographic, that have the, the liquid, the money to have um, a service like this at their function. So I go on there and he invited me to this Facebook group and it was about 20 people. There were a variety of people there, uh, clothing owners, um, I don't know, like chiropractors. I don't know what, what they do a variety of stuff. There were doctors. I, I didn't look at all their, their titles in there. And one lady go like, hey, I bought 10 magazines and didn't sell any of them. And I'm like, what? I'm like, I'm like me, I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna give mine away. So I'm gonna be on the cover in January of 2023. I'm gonna buy a hundred of them and give them away as a marketing tool, right? So a lot of people's mentality is like, something should be free or should just be given to me, basically. I hope that makes some sense. And so I text on there and he said something, he was like, wow, guys, like this should be a marketing thing to give away, not necessarily for you to make money, right? I mean, you may want to try to, and I shared with them my, my sales from HoneyBook. And when they saw that, they were like 
fiberglass. And I was like, hey, I, I'm not trying to brag or I'm hoping this brings value because if you actually don't have a marketing plan, you're just throwing at the dark. You really don't have a target. So I told when I first started, I started with like, two, I started like $2 a day. And if you ask some business owners, like, hey, can you spend $2 a day? Some of the ones I mentor, they're like, oh man, I, I can't do $2 a day. And I said, you need to cut your cable off. I said, do you have cable? I said, cut that cable off right now. Yeah. Wait, $2 a day spending it where? On, on Facebook, on boosting ads. Okay, okay. Because I started with $2 a day. Yeah, were you stressing out about that, $2 a day? No, I wasn't because, well, you know, it's the unknown, right? So there's always that little form, like, oh my God, $2 times third, that's $60. I'm like, but something hit me like, wait a minute, one of my events on the low end's 500, mm. right? So I'm like, what's the worst that can happen? Mm. I mean, I used uh, I used a platform, uh, uh, the, the Knot or uh, Thumbtack. And there, I mean, I wasted $800 with them and broke even, thank God. Jeez. So, I mean, so you got to find where, where you're going to get more bang for your buck, right? Hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I showed them the dollar amount and I was like, hey, I, first I started with 200, then I increased my marketing efforts, then I increased my SEO. So now, uh, expect what, April 1st, I'm now at eight, uh, what, 500, eight, I'm at $850 a month on my marketing budget. And you see what that yielded. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I couldn't, I, <laughs> It's hard. It's hard when you hear someone like mention the numbers that you're doing, like not like spending, but like how much you're bringing in from your business, like income right. from like, I could justify spending 800. If I was making what you were making, I would be like, okay, 800 is like nothing. It's like, it's like a literally like a penny in a bucket, like, but we'll right. get into that. We'll get into that later. We're going to talk about your marketing and, and all that. But um, right. So the, the mistake a lot of people make is they really don't have a concrete plan. Like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to invest $250 a month in marketing. That doesn't mean you wear a t-shirt. Well, I mean, yeah, I wear a t-shirt too. I mean, that, that's part of it. I wear my branded clothes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it needs to be Facebook ads, Google ads, SEO, and, and that kind of nature. Okay. So, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, back, uh, back to the question is, um, you know, what would you recommend someone do while they're first starting off? You mentioned uh, doing jobs for free. Can you right. talk more about that and the benefit? Like why, why should someone do it for free? Right, because you're just starting out. And if you're like me, and now, so in, in our Facebook group, for example, we post what we make and how many events you did. And people will be like, damn, like, how did you do that? How are you charged? Like, you're averaging nine, like one, one, <laughs> that weekend I did that guy's trip. I was in, in Florida. I wasn't even here. And I averaged like, I think $1,100 per event. It was a crazy week. I think in one week, and that was my biggest, uh, biggest weekend. It was like 5,600 in, in, in one Saturday. So, I mean, it was a monster weekend. Um, so everybody asks, how did you do it? Well, you, you start small, right? All big things have small beginnings, right? Nobody ever just started out. Josh didn't start out. Bam, you know, he's super successful like that. But I, I, I called and I reached out to all my friends. I looked on Facebook. I just went down my friends list. I had about 2,000 friends at that time. And I just went down the list. Who's a teacher? Who's a, who works for a corporate? Who works, who, who does what? And immediately I say, hey, I'm looking to do some free events. I just posted it on my Facebook page and bam, three of my friends reached out to me. Hey, it's my friend's, it's my husband's birthday party. That one, she paid me $150. I mean, it was like small money. I mean, mm -hmm. barely, you know, gas and prints basically, you know, and a little bit of some food afterwards. <laughs> but I mean, I think my first one was 50 bucks. Um, I did a free event at a, at a, um, at a venue to get on their vendor list. So the important thing is number one, getting your product out of the house, right? And it gives you experience because my first paid event, I was literally there four hours in advance. I was so nervous. Four you know, hours. Wait, why? <laughs> why? Why so early? I was just, I was just freaking nervous. <laughs> <laughs> and let me you guess, know, like now have... it's like, dude, now it's like four minutes ahead of time, you know, like since you have all yeah, that no, I still get there about an hour and a half. See, I'm the type of person I like to get there, set up. I just walk around, mingle. Uh, obviously, I'm doing shooting video for my YouTube channel, the behind the scenes look. Mm. Um, so there's benefits of getting there, right? And you never know what might happen uh, when you get there. Like this past Sunday, I went out of town for Josh's birthday, came back, had a wedding to go to about an hour away from my house. And I got there about two hours early, actually like two and a half. And they changed their spot. They wanted me to be outside. But anyways, not knocked it out. Uh, but my point of this is doing free events or low paying events is you gain valuable experience that pays dividends in the end that you cannot see right now. 
so many people just want to get paid that thousand dollars. Like, oh, I want to get paid 500, 800, a thousand. But sometimes it takes that initial investment of a free or a fifty dollars, a hundred fifty dollars, two fifty. And I built my my packages up to where now I'm doing over a thousand. Yeah. Perfect, man. Perfect. So speaking of free, uh, next question I have for you is what are some of the best ways to get jobs for free? So I own a photo booth. I'm ready to get jobs. I may not have much money to spend on ads or if maybe I just don't want to. How do I get jobs for free? Yeah, obviously, people need to know you're a business owner, right? It doesn't matter what service or product you have. They need to know you offer something. And one mistake I often see is I'll go immediately to somebody's social media. Like, I had a friend that was a DJ, and I didn't even know he was a DJ. We went to college together, played football together. I'm like, I was like, bro, you're a DJ? And I go to his Facebook page. There's no work on his personal. So, for example, right, you've been following me for a good while now. Like, you know that I own a business, how? <laughs> By my post, right? My, yeah. my, uh, my cover page, my profile pic. There, you can tell there's something there, right? Mm-hmm. And you go to some people's, like, this is one of Josh's videos, you know, five mistakes uh, photo booth owners make. And, you know, their, their profile picture has a picture of their dog, right? Or it, it doesn't like, look what? like, yeah. <laughs> what? Like, what do you mean? <laughs> you <a> photo booth? <laughs> so... Uh, and, and, I, and the second I would say is being consistent. You know, they, they never post. They're not consistent with it. They're not uh, always promoting themselves. You have to be your biggest promoter. You, you can't be sitting back thinking like, well, I posted last week. And even the ones I mentor and coach, I tell them like, hey, every day you have to post. Every day. Rather, you go find somebody else's. I mean, in the beginning, I, you know, I shouldn't say this. I was stealing them. Then I had to go back and delete them because I could get sued for it. So... <laughs> So I went back and deleted them and used the, used PBI as marketing material. And and sometimes it necessarily doesn't even have to be a photo, but it just needs to be a picture of some people having fun. Um, so again, consistency is uh, important. So, and I also posted heavily on Facebook groups. Um, I used Craigslist, which was like five bucks. And the last one I used was Facebook. And just reaching out to people on, on, on social media. That was it. Mm. dude all yeah. those were effective yes i use every single one of those but, and, and and calling vendors excuse me that's what i was thinking I, I called i called josh says call two vendors per day you know two venues two vendors two djs two wedding planners two flower makers or whatever they florist and i would call 10 so anything he told me i 10 i multiplied it times 10 interesting okay yeah how so, much how much time out of your day do you think you that takes you well I mean, maybe two hours, two hours. Wow. Maybe two hours. Yeah. Yeah. I, dude, I, I had a thing where I was just doing 10 minutes a day, you know? So, and I, I literally, I think, man, I did that for like a week and we ended up linking up with this venue and we've already generated maybe 4,000, $5,000 worth of events just from that venue. Like right. literally tomorrow there's an open house for like people that are getting married. They're already booked to come taste food. And right. hey, come bring your photo booth. So, man, I'm just I'm validating what he just said. You guys, that's everything he said will definitely work. So it's proof yeah. that you don't have to have money to get events. So that thank yeah, you for that, again, man. You gotta you gotta have that hustle, like like your YouTube page, right? If you don't have that hustle and drive, you're gonna struggle. Yeah. Oh, dude. People think that you can just buy a booth and all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm so I'm, you're gonna be fully booked. It's not gonna happen. You know, it's it's for sure not gonna happen. <laughs> No, and I'll share this with you. I was working with this young lady. She had a, a Chloe booth, like the webcam booth that I have. She mm-hmm. spent five thousand dollars for it. Everything she has the gold stanchion, the gold carpet, everything you need to run the business. I could tell she just didn't like it. Like it wasn't in her. Mm-hmm. And she she let me hold it. Like, hey, innocent, just hold the booth. You can use it. I said, hey, if I use it, I'll give you a hundred bucks every time I use it. She said, okay, innocent. You know, I tr- she knows some of my friends, so mm-hmm. she trusted me with it. Right? She knows I'm gonna take good care of it. And she calls me about a month ago, like, hey, I want to sell it. I was like, okay, how much? And I, hey, this is a business transaction. This isn't a friendship one now, right? <laughs> but I got it off of her for 1500 bucks. Oh, geez. her whole business. So kind of like the gentleman in San Antonio, shout out to Larry. We're going to be working together. But Yeah, uh, Larry. Yeah. Thanks for the, con- thanks for subscribing, Larry. I appreciate you, man. <laughs> okay. So moving on, let's talk about um, 
paying for jobs, you know, marketing, um, spending money to get gigs. Um, what do you do? What are your favorite ways to spend money to generate my, uh, you know, to generate events? Gotcha. No, that's a good question, right? That's what one, each owner is going to have that dilemma. And what's brought me success is Facebook ads. And when I first looked at Google ads, I think I touched on this. It was, there were a lot of variables in that. Like I remember looking through the, uh, I guess, what do you call it? When you're picking like the, the time slots and when you want to market and because I think Google charges you birth by the click, depending on peak hours also. So I'm trying to get more bang for my buck. So while I was determining which one to go with, obviously I know Google is the number one search engine. YouTube is number two. I knew that at number one, I need to build content and have content on, on my Google, my business, on YouTube, build my following. That was number one. And number two was where I really hit, hit my mark was Facebook ads. So, and that's basically you boosting ads, finding the demographic, putting the age group. And the age group that I went with in my market is women, 18 to 45. I mean, if anybody looks at my website, that's the first thing they see is the women on there, right? And uh, going after them and putting in those keywords. And, you know, here, here I am now, eight months later, started with about a $200 budget. I'm up to $350. I'm spending about $10 a day. And the other five... Uh, 500 is on Google ads now and hmm. SEO. Interesting. But okay. those, those two have been my number one. And, and like kind of like conversation me and you had where, you know, you find a certain type of clientele when you're advertising on some of these platforms. I'm just a man on Facebook. And when you put in those keywords, you're going to find those thousand dollar clients. Mm -hmm. So, and it mm -hmm. definitely helped again, doing free events, you know, using those, uh, let's just say the, the lower budget clients. And now I'm finding the hiring clients i mean they pay easily like i did a, an event at austin country club where um a membership there's twenty thousand dollars annually oh. so trust me they can spend 15 so a lady called me from that said hey make sure you met you mention that you're from the country club i'll give you a discount she called me for a monday and i think they go to lago vista if you google lago vista it's probably like a school in like bel air academy or something like where will smith went to mm. and uh she called me, man, I hit her for $13.99 on a Monday. No, wow. she, she didn't even bat an eye. Oh, that, that's it? Man, I was like, dang it, I should have said it. like $16.99. <laughs> that's it. But obviously, <laughs> and that's another point. You don't want to take advantage of them either, right? They know they have money. They don't want to be price gouged. So you want to be kind of right there where yeah. you're bringing the value and they see value in it, not to where you go. They know, they, oh, he must know I have money because I was at the country club. So, mm -hmm. but you want to look for long-term relationships also. That, that's another piece to it. Don't always look for the home run. I, like I'm trying to get to second and third base. You know, mm -hmm. that, that's another thing I always coach people on. Interesting. So yeah, if you don't mind touching more on, um, you said Facebook, you would, you would say is probably the main source of paid. It, it's 95% uh, actually. So can we talk about, can we talk about that ad that you and I, uh, off, off the camera that you were showing me and you're, you're telling me like, is your money maker? I know you made a video about it, but like, can you talk about right. that, that main ad that makes you majority of your money? Um, talk about how much you roughly spent on it and how much money it's brought yeah. you. So, yeah. So, you know, we had the mastermind, uh, February. So in March, I applied everything we learned in the mastermind from Josh. And we had another host there that was a really good SEO guy. Mm -hmm. And I changed up my website, put a blog in there. I, I did a press release, got more, um, got more leads from my SEO. And I changed a couple of things on my Facebook ads also. And that month I did right under 17,000 off of spending 600 or roughly 550 at that time. So I was paying my SEO guy 250 a month in March. And I just raised it up in April. Wow. Yeah. So again, and I think another thing too, um, Drew is, you know, you have to have a goal in mind, right? Obviously having Josh and be on photo booth boss, what was the goal? The goal was a hundred thousand. I'm like, Oh my God, you know, here I am when I, when I made my first two, $500, like, Oh my God, that's 1%. So I said, <laughs> well, how, many, how do I get more of these 500? But instead, I was focused more on how do I get these 500 and convert them to $1,000 events? Instead of doing 100 events, I need to try to do 50 events or I just yeah. need to charge more. How can I, what can I do to increase my, my per ticket average? One more question about the Facebook ads. Um, so let's just say uh, just getting started, 
my first ad is probably not going to do as well as I think, right? There is a trial and error period where you're finding out what works for you, your area, and you know, it's really about the ad itself. And I think that's what people um, probably don't focus on. They think that like Facebook is going to just take care of them and just get generate all this money. Can you talk about how important it is to, you know, to have patience and how important it is to have uh, right. a post that you're boosting, you know, how good it has to be, the quality of the post. Right. Patience, consistency. Um, you know, some people quit after one week. Oh, I, I paid 50 bucks and didn't get it. I was like, no, no, no. You need to do like 30, 60, 90 days. But when I first started, I, I used four different uh, um, promotions. So I had the one with the pink picture that you've seen. I used another one. I used a video. And I'm, I'm going to watch these four for 30 days. And I just watched this pink one just just skyrocket. I mean, it just, whoo. And I just knew immediately after two weeks, I, I deleted those other ones. I just stopped them. Mm. And I went with that one and that, that was the one I went with. Mm. But but the key is, you know, again, it's a long term thing. It's not just marketing isn't a one time fix. It's an every day. It's a it's, it's for the rest of your business journey, not just I'm going to try for one week, then I'm going to stop marketing. Oh, I need to start back up again. It's consistent. And it's funny because a lot of my friends in Dallas see it, Austin see it because they're on Facebook and I hit they hit the keyword and. Facebook is, is able to put it on their uh, on their feed, I guess. And, um, you know, it, that, that's just the thing. Be consistent and, and keep doing it. At least trial and error. You got to try. Okay, cool, cool. All right. So um, I think uh, something I think you're really underrated about, um, and I think I wish you guys touched more on, um, on the Photo Booth Boss series, you're upselling. I spoke to you on the phone yeah. last week, and you were telling me about, you know, your upsell tricks. Talk about... Um, you know, talk, tell me every little thing you know about upselling, what you upsell on and the opportunity and um, right. how much money do you think, like percentage wise of your business is from your upsells? So here's the crazy part. In the beginning, I thought by adding value was just giving it away for free. And that's actually not the case, right? And I get it. In the beginning, if you're just starting out, you may have to do that. Um, but once you've built up your clientele, your content and you're noticeable in the, the rental business. People know who you are by looking at your Instagram. They, they know because mm -hmm. people will be like, oh, my God, I, can, I see why you charge that. I can just tell where some people be like, I can't afford you. And mo I'll be like, hey, I can work out a plan for you. Let, let's talk. What kind of package would you like to build? Well, I wouldn't want to offend you because I can tell by your work you do a great job. Right. Once they know you do a great job, people are willing to pay for the value. So, for example, I have, I have my fun package. Right. And if you notice, a lot of people go with bronze silver gold right those are like your traditional i go fun fun or funnest mm. right and it kind of what i want to do is i want to hit their emotions right uh psychologically you want to have fun fun or funnest which one sounds better to you well i'm trying to have the funnest right <laughs> so if you go on my website and you look at my fun package which would be the bronze it's a very small list of things so for example obviously you get an attended uh timely uh setup takedown uh unlimited prints fun props. I try to make it as simple as possible. Then I have the funner package that has the exact same things as the fun package. Then I put in the red carpet, a uh, gold stanchion, um, two by six photo. Then on the fun, it has everything except for like, uh, it has the four by six in it. Uh, I'm gonna give them a flash drive. And then the add-ons are like the album, the, the, the blow up enclosure. Um, what else? So those two are building your, your only upsells and those are about a hundred bucks each, right? Or an extra hour, a hundred dollars. So say you're on a tight budget, like, hey, Innocent, I really like it. I really like your funnest package, but I can only afford your fun package. I said, I understand. I said, hey, well, let's go with the fun. And what I'll do is, hey, I'll throw in the gold stanchions, which is easy for me to carry because I'm gonna have that in already, right? And what I do is I let them put the deposit down. So let's just say that one's a uh, 580 for two hours. So I threw in the gold stanchions and the red carpet for free. Okay. So now they, that, I feel like, oh man, he was nice enough to give me that. I'm going to go with him. All right, great. He gives me the 550. Now 30 days or a week before the event, I'm going to call him like, hey, Drew, this is innocent. We need to go over some details about your template. All right, cool, cool. Let me show you some samples. So I'll send him the four by six samples. <laughs> so now, <laughs> and I'll send him one, two by six sample that I've already made. Mm -hmm. And like, oh man, I really like that gold one. They're talking about the four by six. So that's a $50 upgrade. 
So he was like, oh man, I, I really like that one. I said, I said, cool. Well, with the package that you have with the fun, yours comes with a two by six. So that's a $50 upcharge just to cover the prints. Uh, do you want to go with that? And they'll cash at me and Venmo me. And so far, my, my percentage is really good at doing that. And then I'll tell them I've done this at after the event or during the event. And also I'll do it obviously a week before. And I'll tell them like, hey, you also didn't buy, since you didn't get the funnest package, you're not going to get the flash drive with all the pictures. You know, do you want the pictures of all the event while you're partying? You can see all your friends and use it as ransom. You know, when you see them acting goofy in the, in the photo book, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So both of them is a hundred bucks if you want to do that. Like, oh man, a hundred dollars? I don't got a hundred. All right, so what, what about 80? Is 80, is 80 fair? Mm. And they'll be like, man, I can do 60 or they'll say something and I'll give it to them for that amount. But uh, it's easy money. Dude, how, much is started, the, how much does a USB cost? Like $2. <laughs> oh man. So, but if you may not think about that, if you add 50 bucks or say it was 40, or just on the low end, it's $20. I mean, just add that up to your gross profits that, that you're going to make off that event. But to, to your point, how much have I made? I started that in March. So what I did was if, if I send you an invoice, you can clearly see what you're getting. So what I used to mess up on is again, here's a mistake I made. I would just, I thought bringing value was just upgrading them to the gold and just giving it to them. No, 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 no. Now I put, you got the fun package. I added the gold carpet or the red carpet, the gold stanchion. And at the bottom, it shows what the upsells are, like the, the flash drive, the, the four by six, extra hour, the enclosure. And when they see that, they're like, oh, hey, you know what? We want to get that. And the way I price my packages, it's almost to where you can add those on. It's not as much as the next package. So, oh, you know what? I, I like that, but I just want to add those two things. Or I just want those two or one item or whatever. Okay. Hmm. If that makes any sense. Yeah, no, no, no. Totally, totally. But I, I probably, you know, again, I did uh, probably 20 events in the last month and a half or two months. Easy 500 bucks in upsells. Easily. Wow. Damn. Cool. All right, man. I think we are running out of time here on the Zoom call, but... That's pretty much everything I wanted to ask you, all the knowledge I wanted to get out of you. Um, anything you want to plug? I know you do some coaching. Do you, uh, anything you want to, you know, talk about? Yeah, definitely. If, if somebody needs some one-on-one -on -one coaching, I'd love to work with you. Um, what, what I'm doing here isn't only for the photo booth. It's transferable to any industry. I actually help out a gentleman that owns a, uh, a mobile arcade business. Uh, it's like a, a party bus with, with video games in it. I'm helping him out right now. So I, I definitely like to help. Uh, if, if you need some coaching, mentoring, I can definitely help you out. Cool. Where do they, uh, where does everyone reach you for that? Yeah. If you want to give me a call, 512-924-2894, or you can email me at I am my initials at flashpartyphotoboot.com. Cool. Cool. Yeah. And also guys, I'm going to leave uh, his email in the description. So if you guys want to connect with Innocent, that's in the description. So uh, yeah, man, appreciate you. Like always. Thank you. I always learn something when I talk to you. So Appreciate you, man. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right.